walls are implemented in the structure to transfer wind loads to the building slabs. In this tutorial, we will explain the design and output details for double span wall with a parapet in the new Steel Smart System version 8, since it carries details common to all other types. To begin, from the home screen, we'll open Current Walls module and choose Double Span Wall with a Parapet template. The template opens with various design input parameters that need to be set. We can assign the criteria and set up wall stud geometry and model in any order. Changing the name to Double Span, W underscore 1, in this example, we'll start by set span height for each floor parapet height, floor 2 and floor 1, and change stud spacing to any span and it will be changed to all spans by default. Next, we'll enter the design parameters starting with the design code input selections. You'll notice there are options for the International Building Code and the Canadian National Building Code. Previous versions of the codes can be selected. For this example, the 2018 IBC is selected. We'll select ASD as the design method. Default strength and deflection factors added according to selected code and design method, and we can change it. There are also options to design for web crippling. Depending on connection types or locations of concentrated loads and reactions, the web crippling check may be needed. Options for considering standard punch outs or web holes and the strength increase of cold work of forming are available. Typically for stud members, these items would be considered. Next, we can enter member data for wall stud. To begin with member input, we can choose to design the member based on its inputs or select check safety to analyze a specific member. Steel Smart System can design standard studs, TSN double lip, TSN jam stud, or optimize a design with all kinds of members available during solving optimize all options available only with design option. Then we can select the member layout. There are options for one piece, two pieces, back to back, and two pieces toe to toe. If you select either of the two piece options, you can design the fastener spacing to connect them. For this example, we select one piece member layout, then chose the section from drop down list. Down the left side, we can move into the bracing inputs and let's close the design and member data section to clean up our workspace. Start by adding the maximum bridging spacing. Next, we'll look at bridging member type and make the appropriate selections based on efficiency of design, customer preference, strength, or other related criteria to the design. The bridging members are set for all spans. You can also adjust spacing for bridging line anchors, but for this example, we'll leave the default. Next, adjust the lateral and torsional bracing spacings. Lastly, set the distortional buckling rotational stiffness value to 97.5. Usually, if this value is unknown, it should be set to zero. Next, under deflection requirements, lateral deflection limits, and the absolute lateral deflection can be set and deflection at free and parapet can be calculated as relative or absolute per hour selection. Following the deflection inputs are the loads. Wind loads can be applied for each span and we can also get lateral loads value from load generator. Just open load generator 
from here, open saved load generator file. And calculate, select the value, and click on OK. In this example, we'll set loads as 46, 46, and 77. Next, under loads, we can see a tabbed list of connections within the window for the base bypass connection and head. We have options to choose connection type for this curtain wall example, we'll set the base connection as none. Clip category and clip name and fastener data. and VertiClip SLB for bypass and head connections. And the last input parameter are the user and project information can be set from input for the new project. Usually, we didn't change user information for each project. Then we can insert project information or load save one. Now, we can solve the problem by pressing the Run button. The design summary will appear showing if each of the components meets the capacity and serviceability requirements of the design. In this case, they are. In reviewing each output section down the left side, starting with members, the software shows the design section. The actual and allowable forces on the section. And the serviceability check of each section for each span. Next in the bridging tab, we can see the bridging member designed for each span along with its actual and allowable forces. The reaction forces used for design of the bridging connections are also given as output. The connections output tab allows the design to review the clip design. The actual and allowable forces are given as well as the actual and allowable forces for the screw that is used for the connection to the stud. The connections locations are tabbed across the top of the window. Next, we can review the factored and unfactored reaction on each joint in the design. The unfactored reactions for each load case can be selected from the pull down menu. The designer is able to view the moment, share, and 
deformation diagrams for each load type of low combination. These can be viewed in the stud framing model off to the right in the main window. Finally, we can review and export input and output data in the report module. SteelSmart Systems 8.0 now allows the user to show and hide different sections of the report using checkboxes for each section of the report. If you want to return to the input data and make any changes to the design and resolve, you just have to unlock input and it will allow you to go back and edit.